Hi everybody, my name is Tessie and this is Homestead Tessie where we bring back old fashioned traditions back to life. Hello everyone and welcome to my kitchen. Today we're going to make a very old fashioned recipe and that is our great grandma Minnie's ketchup. Now this would be my husband's great grandma and I was able to find her photo and find a recipe. This is from 1942 and this is her handwritten recipe. It is titled Mrs. Schumberger's Ketchup. Very good. So I don't know who Mrs. Schumberger was but it was my husband's great grandma's recipe. The theme of my channel is I'm going to bring a lot of memories to life. I'm going to share with you all kinds of Mennonite traditions Mennonite recipes from history way back even diaries and today we're going to make the ketchup the way they would have back in 1942 the reason why I say that is because we're going to bottle it now I need to say something because we are living in modern times and this is not USDA regulated in other words they haven't proven this to be safe in the modern world but this is how great grandma Minnie would have canned her ketchup in fact, I know that is true because I found a whole bunch of her old ketchup bottles years and years ago when we were first married and we lived on the home farm. I don't know whatever happened to those ketchup bottles, but they look just like this. Now, these bottles, we are going to can in them, and we are going to can in them the open kettle method. Because there's a lot of sugar and there's a lot of spices in it, I feel comfortable in canning it this way. But I just want to say again, for all of you who do follow the book, this is a 1942 recipe, very old, very quaint, and very unusual in the day that we're living in. Now I'm going to do some further research. I might store these in the refrigerator until I see that they are sealed. But these have the sealing. If you are going to get bottles like this, do your own research. And follow some books that teach you how to. But here we have the sealing stoppers that we're going to go ahead and make it really hot and I'll show you how we do that. So here are my tomatoes from my garden. I have them, all I do is I cut them in halves and we have some onions. The first thing we're going to do in the recipe, we're going to go ahead and we are going to cook these slightly. We're also going to add, we're going to cook these slightly. We're also going to add some of my dehydrated pepper flakes. We're going to add that to all of this. Once it cooks down a little bit, we are going to use the Victorio strainer. In her old recipe from 1942, it says to sieve it. So there was a colander sieve, which I have one with a wooden stopper. But my Victoria is so much quicker. And I think the Victoria strainers came out probably in the 1950s. So it is still relatively old as well. We're going to follow step by step her recipe, how to make it. I've never made this before, but she says it's very good. I also want to say that the recipes and the photos are our family photos. These are our personal photos and personal recipes from our family. All right, so let's get started. And we're going to go ahead and add some peppers to this. We're going to cook it down. Then we're going to put it through the strainer. Then we're going to bring it back and put all kinds of added ingredients to it. This will bring the acidity up and that way we can can it this way. If you're making this, go ahead then and put it in regular mason jars and can it that way. But I would like to see how they did it in 1942. I would never, ever, ever, I repeat never, try to do something like this with a low acid food. Please don't. This is a high acid food because of what we're going to be adding to it and I feel comfortable in trying it this way. All right, let me show you what we add. If you watch videos from other countries, they also do a lot of bottling. In fact, in some countries, it's not even called canning, it's called bottling. So we're going to just go ahead and add a whole bunch of my dried peppers. Now these are not hot peppers, these are just regular bell peppers that are dehydrated. Alright, we're going to put this on the stove and cook it just a little bit, and then we'll run it through the strainer. Oftentimes in my videos, you hear me talk about Grandma Fanny, and today we're talking about Great Grandma Minnie. So who was Great Grandma Minnie? Well, that was Fanny's mother-in-law. It was her husband's mother. A lot of times, things call for pickling spice. I don't have pickling spice, but I'm going to make my own.
and this old-fashioned recipe it calls for pickling spice so what I'm gonna do is add one of these little tea bags and we're gonna make our own pickling spice so I read what the ingredients are and I had all the ingredients separately so I'm gonna put it in this little bag because then we're gonna put this little bag in the ketchup that's how the old-fashioned recipe is called for. In fact, I remember Grandma Fanny making ketchup this way. You didn't put pickling spice in the ketchup. You put it in a little bag like this, and you let it seep for quite a while. Then you pull the bag out when you're ready to can. So we're going to go ahead, and we're going to make our own little pickling spice. So it calls for some cloves. When people did things the old-fashioned way, it took a lot of time. But then they didn't have multimedia, they didn't have YouTube, they didn't have a computer. And so their evenings were spent relaxing. So I don't know. Did they have more time than we do? I think so. Even though we have all this modern things, it seems like the olden days were quite the golden days. So we're going to add some mustard seed some bay leaves gonna add some peppercorn I should show you here what we're doing now this bag is quite small I should have had a little bit of a bigger bag but it will work And then we're going to add a little bit of chili flakes. And that's what it called for. Not too much, though, because I really don't like it hot. And there you go. There is our pickling spice, homemade and ready to go. Once the tomatoes are cooked down a little bit, then we'll get back on the camera here, and I'll show you how we put it through the Victoria Mill, which you're starting to see a lot of videos. If you haven't, you will, of me using the Victoria Mill. It's a food mill. It takes out all the seeds and all of the skins. I'm going to clean up and I'll show you in just a minute. Step number two. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and put it into the Victoria strainer. Alright everyone, so now we have the tomato juice and now we're going to go and add all of our spices. Add two cups of sugar, we're going to add our spice bag. Now if I remember right, Grandma used to tie it to the handle, I thought. I thought she used to somehow tie it to the handle. And let's see if I can do that. I know the string is really short on this. But I am sure I remember her doing this. And then when she would stir it, I don't know. I'll, I'll try to tie it to the handle there. We'll figure out how to do that. One tablespoon of cinnamon. Yes, cinnamon. Two tablespoons of salt, and we are going to use canning salt for this. All right, I'm going to give it a stir. And now it calls for five tablespoons of cornstarch in one cup of vinegar. So we have my vinegar that we made last year. This is my really good vinegar. I'm going to go ahead. And add a cup of vinegar. And then five tablespoons of cornstarch in the vinegar. Two tablespoons of cornstarch and one cup of vinegar. And we want to really whisk this good. Now 
we're going to add it to this. So we're going to boil this for 10 minutes. And then I'll show you what we do next. So I made this recipe about two weeks ago. And the clear Dollar Tree jars do not seal. So you would have to keep that in the refrigerator. But the dark colored Amazon jars sealed nicely. I love this ketchup recipe. In fact, I will be using it from now on. It is amazing. And you will see a lot of videos with me using my homemade ketchup from 1942.